Hey guys, it's Rebecca and today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite classic books. Now, I know classics can be a little hard to read at times. I get confused by all the long language and dry spots in classics, but some of my favorite books do include classics and today I want to talk about some of my favorites that I like and that I think that you might like. The first one I have is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I really love the Disney movie. I have watched that since I was a little kid and I enjoy watching it so much. And I decided to pick up the book and it is wonderful. It is kind of different than the movie. In the book, Peter Pan is kind of a jerk kid and he is really mean. Nothing like what he is in the Disney movie. And the reason why I love this book so much is because I think it shows a good picture of what it is like to not want to grow up. And Peter Pan does this by stealing children and making them be his mother. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to grow up either. And so when I read Peter Pan, it kind of gives me a sense of, you know, why I should grow up and the dangers that happen when people don't grow up. And so if you're looking for a short read, I would definitely recommend picking up Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, and I think you'll definitely be surprised about how different it is from the classic Disney movie. The next book I have is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I think this is a typical staple on every girl's classic favorite list, but I really enjoy Jane Eyre because I think it shows the lifestyle and struggles for people during this time. Jane Eyre is about this girl. Her family has died when she is young, so she is sent to the Lockwood Home for Girls. I'm pretty sure that's the name. Correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong. But she is sent to the Lockwood Home for Girls and she is abused there. She is beaten. She is just not treated very well. She also lives with her extended family and they do not treat her very well. And then she goes to live with Mr. Rochester and be a nanny to his ward and she falls in love with him and it's a beautiful story about love and overcoming differences and learning how to love someone. I really really enjoy this book. It is more and it's a more hefty book but I really enjoy it and although it does have its dry spot I think it is a great book and, and I think it should be on everyone's classic favorite list. The next two books I have are by the same author, and the first one is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is one of Oscar Wilde's few novels, and I really enjoy this book. This is a gothic literature book, which I enjoy gothic literature. Gothic literature is not literature in the typical, in the modern goth, meaning it is more supernatural, ghost, unexplainable things, windy, stormy nights, things like that. The picture of Dorian Gray is about a man named Dorian Gray and he has a picture painting of himself. Instead of Dorian aging, the picture ages. So Gray becomes obsessed with this picture. He looks at it constantly and whenever Dorian Gray makes a bad decision in his life that would cause his normal facial features to change, whether it's he becomes more cynical or becomes more angry in his life, those changes are reflected onto the picture. And by the end of his life, the picture is a mess while Dorian Gray remained young. And I really enjoy this book. It has a great message and I really think it is a great novel and there's not too many dry spots and it's filled with love and mystery and intrigue and a really shocking, sad, beautiful ending. And the next book by Oscar Wilde that I have is The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Plays. I read all of them, but my favorite, the one I'm going to talk about today, is The Importance of Being Earnest. I read this book in around 10th or 11th grade after a friend recommended it to me, and I recently read it again for my British literature class, and I fell in love with it even more. This is a play by Oscar Wilde, and in this play it follows the story of Algernon and Jack, or Ernest, and Ernest has two different personalities. He doesn't have split personality disorder, but he assumes two different characters, whether he's in the country or whether he's in the city. And Algernon 
does this thing called bunburying where if he doesn't want to go to a social event he makes the excuse that his friend Bunbury in the country is sick and he must go tend to him. Play is all about finding love, avoiding responsibility and how to come to terms with that and it's not a very serious play but I feel like it does have some good messages to learn at the end of it and I really enjoy this play. It gives you a good glimpse into Victorian lifestyle and really shows you how far we have come since the Victoria era of thinking. The next book I have is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This book is set in the 1920s and it's a typical flapper jazz age novel and it follows Jay Gatsby who is a rich man um, during the 1920s through us parties and our narrator is struggling between wanting to love this one girl and being friends with Jay Gatsby. The Great Gatsby doesn't have much of a plot, I don't feel like, but it shows the dangers of being caught up in this whirlwind of party life and what can happen to you no longer are grounded in reality. Um, the movie is also very good. I love Leonardo DiCaprio. That was another movie he should have won an Oscar for, but we're not going to talk about that because he has one now, which is great. But I love The Great Gatsby. I've read it a couple times, and even when I went and sat in on a high school English class, they were discussing The Great Gatsby. So I'm so glad that this book is still being taught in high schools. I think it's a great book, and I believe that every person should read it because it really shows us the struggles of life and how sometimes we want to escape the ordinary mundane things of life and how sometimes that can be detrimental to us and to those around us. And the last book that I want to talk to you about today is, is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I have only read this and one other Charles Dickens book and Charles Dickens is one of my favorite authors. I really do, do enjoy Great Expectations. And the reason why I haven't read many other books are because they're just so long and so daunting. But I have watched a couple period dramas for his other books and I really enjoyed those. So if you are looking to get more into Charles Dickens, I would suggest watching some period dramas on his books. Um, I have watched Bleak House and Little Dora. They are both excellently made and great acting, great storyline. And they can get you through Charles Dickens' novel in about 8 to 10 episodes, which is really nice. But Great Expectations, it's about a young boy named Pip, and he lives with his his brother and his aunt. I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I've read this book. But he lives with his brother and his aunt, and then he receives news that he's being sponsored to go live in London um, to get an education. He moves to London, and the whole book is him trying to figure out who his sponsor is. He has a guess, but he wants to know if that, if it's right or not. And he also is learning how to love other people by going to Miss Havisham's house and learning to love her and falling in love with a young girl named Estella. I'm pretty sure that's her name. The thing that I love most about this book is how all the characters are tied together. At the beginning, you don't know how they all fit together but by the end you realize that each of the characters are in this circle of he knows him because of this and then he's is he is this person's relative and it's so amazing to see how Charles Dickens ties that all together and that is one of the main things that I love about Great Expectations. Now with any Charles Dickens novels if you have read any of his they can be very long-winded at times. He really loves description. So if you're not a big description person, then I would recommend just kind of skipping over those long-winded bouts of description. I think he describes a person for about four or five lines, which is more than you really should. But I do love Great Expectations. It is my favorite book of Charles Dickens, even though I've only read two. And I think it's just a great story about love, about accepting others who other people in society do not accept and coming to terms with those in society that others tend to shy away from. And the last one I want to talk to you about, I don't own the single book of it. I own in a 
collection. So I'm going to stream the movie, but that is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This is the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice. I would watch the one with Colin Firth, but it's five hours long and I really don't have time to watch that. So we're just going to stick with this Pride and Prejudice version, which I feel does capture the whole story in two and a half hours instead of five hours. And it also has great music. I listen to the music all the time while I'm writing and I simply adore it. But Pride and Prejudice is the story of Elizabeth Bennet and her journey in finding love with Mr. Darcy. I really love this novel because I feel like it shows how sometimes we look at people and we judge them for who their families are, what they look like, what they dress like, how they act, and both Elizabeth and Darcy are guilty of this. No party is the perfect one and has to wait for the other one to change their ways. I believe that both parties experience both pride and prejudice and I think this is a great novel to, to show how prejudiced that we can be as people. And I think that once we overcome those prejudices, then we can love people for who they are and find that, you know, someone might love us, but we have been too blind and too prideful and too prejudiced against them to realize that we have love in our hands. And that is all the classics that I enjoy. Obviously, there are other classics that other people enjoy, and I shamefully have not read that many classics just because they are so hard and long to get through. But what are some of your favorite classics? Leave them down in the comments below if you have any different than mine or some of the same. And I'd love to chat with you about it in the comments. And until my next video, happy reading!